I'd like to talk a little bit today about the Holy Spirit. There are weeks I watch the news, sometimes daily, and I scratch my head and think, how can we as human beings be so inhumane to one another? And, and part of what I know as I think about the way that we as human beings live and act and, and what we do with our lives is a lot of that comes down to the voices we hear in our head. Now, all of us have voices in our head, right? Um, I hear sometimes my mom speaking to me in my head, sometimes my dad. Some, sometimes it's the person I was listening to on the radio whose voice and opinions continue to shape my own voices and opinions. Uh, often it's the things that I read. Uh, it's, uh, in Freud's terms, perhaps the id, the ego, and the superego. Right? These voices that are competing for my attention. And what's interesting is in the Bible we hear of a voice that we're meant to listen to, and that is the Holy Spirit. When we think of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes to God's people as God's imminent presence, God's immediate presence in our lives to speak to us, to guide us, shape us, form us, nudge us, lead us to do God's work and God's will. So we think of God permeates the entire cosmos. Everything that exists is contingent upon God's existence. God's beingness comes in human flesh in Jesus Christ and then God's imminent presence is what's at work in our hearts and lives in the Holy Spirit. And so our task is to listen. It's to pay attention. The Holy Spirit never forces himself upon us. The Holy Spirit will not make us listen. And the Holy Spirit whispers and not shouts. Now, I remember Jesus said that after the Spirit, he told his disciples this just before he left this earth. He said, he said I will be sending the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he will give you power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And I love how this is portrayed in the, on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, that all of these disciples were in the upper room and they were praying. There was 120 of them, men and women. They were praying and asking God's Spirit to come into their lives. And suddenly there was the sound of a rushing, violent, or mighty wind. And it appeared as though there were flames of fire. And they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, this wind of the Holy Spirit blowing within them blowing them out into the streets of Jerusalem. And there they were proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ in languages they had never learned before. This was what the Spirit did in their lives. And when I think about this, I think about this power of the Spirit and the way the Spirit works in our lives, this powerful wind of the Spirit. And I think of something that Jack Levison said. He's the professor of Old Testament at Perkins School of Theology. He said that when he read the Bible, the Spirit was a force to be reckoned with in the Scriptures and a, an impulse to which mere humans capitulated, a source of daily breath and uncontrollable outside power. I love that imagery of this uncontrollable outside power of the gale force winds of the Holy Spirit blowing within us, leading us here or there if we'll allow the Spirit to blow. Now, we can either resist the wind. We can lean into the wind sometimes when we don't have strength to walk. We can lean into the wind and He sustains us. And we can be led by the wind of the Holy Spirit in mission in the world and empowered by the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. This is the Christian ideal. I think of a little children's sermon that I did some years ago. Probably every pastor has done this. But thinking about the power tools that we have, and i got to tell you, I'm not prone to use my tools very much at home. I hate doing work around the house, but every so many months, my wife finally says, look, you got to get this done. And so I went out to the garage, and I picked up my DeWalt power drill, and I went down to the basement, and I started to, to work on a project. And I had to screw some things into a, into a board, and I, I began working with the drill, and now, I hadn't plugged this drill into the battery charger for months, and I begin drilling, and pretty soon I hear it going, and it just it runs out of battery power. And, and I'm thinking to myself, I can't believe it. I, I don't, you know, I've got this powerful tool, but it, it's not able to do anything right now because I didn't plug it into the power source. And, and so, not wanting to go up to the garage and fetch a uh, screwdriver, I found myself doing this, trying to turn the screw with the screwdriver. And you know what? When you do this, you realize just how foolish it is to not plug the tools into the power source. And, and here's the thing, in our own lives, when we take advantage of the power of the Holy Spirit, we find our lives, we find our lives empowered to do God's work. I want to invite you every day to be able to say, Holy Spirit, fill me afresh and anew. I want you to listen carefully for the still small voice of the Spirit speaking to you and guiding you. I want you to recognize that God will put you in positions, if you're listening and paying attention, He'll put you in positions where you can be His tool and instrument to serve, to bless, to encourage, and to heal others. I want you to remember that the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, is your comforter, your paraclete, your advocate, your helper, if only you'll avail yourself of the power of the Holy Spirit. Would you pray with me? God, for all those who are listening to this video right now, watching it, I pray that you would fill them afresh and anew with your Holy Spirit. And would you simply pray, come Holy Spirit, fill my heart, be my helper, form and shape me, guide and lead me, 
Help me to do your will. Blow within my life. Come, Holy Spirit, come.